Good morning. I'm coming to you today from a from an area of my home where I spend a lot of time. My I do a lot of quiet reflection in the bathroom because you know we're getting close to the end of the month, and I know a lot of us live in different parts of the country, and some of us have started to maybe look at going back out at the end of the month. Others have had their um, stay-at-home orders extended into May. And however long we have gone in this coronavirus and quarantine situation, there is still no toilet paper at the grocery store. I don't understand it. And if you can imagine, if you know me in my personal life, um, it's no secret that I have issues with my stomach. And so that was, out of, of all the things about this whole situation, me personally, that was the most alarming. I need to have toilet paper. I just do. And um, I may have issues with the tissue, but oh well. Nonetheless, I know I'm not the only one. So I have spent a lot of time thinking about this and for those of you who still cannot find toilet paper and you haven't figured out a solution, I thought we should talk about it. Okay, so number one, um, I carry toilet paper a lot of times in my purse during allergy season and when I go to church in case I cry. And so I have, you know, plan B, getting a plan together. I'm all about a plan. Went through all my purses, went through the console of my car, because by the way, you never know where you're gonna be when diarrhea hits. So it's not unusual for me to have a roll of toilet paper in the car. Um, and pulled out all of these not all the way used rolls of toilet paper, right? Because it all counts. <laughs> it all counts. Now, here's something maybe you haven't thought about. Don't just be taking your rolls off of the holder, okay? and throw any of these little pieces uh, in the garbage, okay? Because if you will just collect them all, every little, oh no, see, that's wasteful. You gotta get every little piece of it off because if you do, oh no, 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 okay. Whew. Precious, precious, precious. See, you almost have enough to wipe, almost. Okay, but if you'll save them, see, there's a wipe, there's a wipe every wipe counts okay so that's another tip see even that i don't know if we could shave it off and maybe press it together in a sheet that's one more sheet okay and by the way i don't know who came up with the two sheets is enough rule but that is not true okay probably a man now um here's another thought you may not be able to find tissue paper but maybe you could find some napkins now, if you have to use nap, oh, there we go, napkins. Now, if you have to use napkins um, a lot to get you like between rolls or when you can find it, um, it's gonna hurt after a while. So I would suggest to you that you know while you're just sitting here, um, having your own quiet reflection period, um, doing your business, that you use that time to take a sheet and wad it up and spread it out and wad it up and spread it out because it will soften it and it'll get it closer to that soft um, toilet paper consistency that is kind to your parts, okay? So that's just a little tip, I don't know if you know that. Um, that also works with a lot of your napkins if you crunch it up. Also, it works with um, like those brown paper towels that are really harsh. Um, you, if you'll just wad it up and straighten it and wad it up and straighten it, it will soften up and it will do in an emergency. So beyond the coronavirus, like if you get stuck in a public bathroom, um, just to know that. I think the brown paper is the worst, but also that white paper, you know, on a roll. So don't forget about napkins. It's another resource. And that's really what we're talking about is maximizing our resources. This is just one area. Um, my husband, he's such a dragon slayer. He came home with a pack of these. Now, they work for babies, right? So they could work for us. Um, just don't flush them. These are not flushable. Also, I'm hesitant on flushing too many napkins as well, unless you soften them and then use them sparingly. 
you know, figure that out, how you can maximize your wipes with a napkin because it is thicker and not made to go through your system. So do keep that in mind if I had to make a disclaimer. There it is. But these, of course, are not flushable. So look in the section where they um, sell Heine wipes and um, also baby wipes. Now, I did feel guilty about this because we don't have a baby and I feel like I was taking this away from a mom with a screaming child. Um, so I'm going to use these only in the case of emergency so that I can bless a mom after this is all over. Um, hopefully I won't have to use them, but it is like natural care and first, is it say sensitive? Yeah, these are sensitive wipes. I'm sensitive. Okay. <sighs> sensitive as a briar patch. Now for us women, uh, here's another idea and my, um, I have a good friend of mine she did a video that included this tip and like the same day my husband suggested that my daughter and I use this for number one and that's a washcloth. So like wipe it, rinse it, these are washable. Now, if you wipe it, definitely rinse it, right? You're gonna wanna rinse it out really good before you just throw them into the washing machine. But um, you could get out all of those rags, you know those rags, those washcloths, that we insist on hoarding and never seem to use. We always go to um, paper towels. Um, by the way, paper towels are in high demand too. Don't use paper towels. But you could do this. So I do have two here just in emergency. Now that doesn't help me with the um, number two. And my shower is right here and I have thought about practicing um, doing my business and what could I do to get from here to the shower to rinse off and I can't bring myself to do it. I know people do it. I just can't bring myself to do it. Now, here's another thing that happened between my husband and I um, a couple of weeks ago. we I don't want to say we got in a panic, but we had the idea of maybe we should do like the rest of the world and get a bidet. And he, we placed an order on the Amazon, no lie, within an hour of each other in two separate rooms. And he ordered this. Okay, so you hook it up to your toilet and you spray yourself. Um, I am just very concerned about the mechanics of doing this option because, I mean, if you have any issue with like muscle or, um, you know, your muscles are tight, you can't really reach around, uh, you're just out of shape. I mean, not not everybody can do this, right, to, to do your thing. Um, I'm afraid of coming at it from behind because then I'm just going to spray up. This, I don't know. This just seems like hairy carry to me to be trying to navigate and spray. Also, aim. I'm very concerned about aim um, and all of that. So this just seems very dicey to me. Um, he ordered that, and then I ordered a bidet. So we kind of had the same idea. Now, I get this. This was made. I know that it says that that's a hand bidet, but again. Um, but see, this one, I feel like you have more of a chance for success only because it's made to do the aiming for you. Um, and so I am thinking about that. Um, I have a friend of mine who has went, happened to have went to bidets in their house in November, and they have been toilet paper free since then. So they were very prepared. And I think what they do is that they've uh, made scraps of, like they cut up washcloths and stuff for the drying. Cause see the drying also is a concern for me. I mean, do you just air dry? I don't really have time for that. Um, but I think what they do is they dry and rinse and wash. So they have like a little basket of little strips for drying. And I think I can get on board with that. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to probably have my husband install it because it does seem sanitary. Like if you do the research and watch videos and hear testimonials, it is sanitary. Now, you may have also seen a video and they show a peach, right, with dirt on it and then it washes it off. And I get that, you know, a peach has a little bit of fuzz. But I, again, I have a couple of concerns. I don't know if you have answers. Um, I'm thinking of what about people, I'm not naming any names, but you know, they're not like a peach with a little bit of fuzz. They're more like a kiwi with hair, like a lot of hair. Does, is that, just feel like that traps 
odors and things and does the bidet is it powerful enough to get through the hair um that's one concern also some of us are more like this orange we got a lot of dimpling and a lot of cellulite back there what if it gets in the crevices does the bidet is it strong enough to get through the crevices of my cellulite it's just a question i do do you put a mirror back here? Because I just feel like you should inspect to make sure it all. I mean, you're just like assuming that it all got washed away. I do I get a hand mirrored? I just feel like there's a need to check. I mean, don't you check the toilet paper? You're just taking it for granted. You're just like having the faith of a mustard seed. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. It just it might be more than I can do, but. I feel challenged to do it. And I don't like my dependency on toilet paper. That's another thing. I don't want to feel like I'm dependent on the government finding me toilet paper. I need to be self-sufficient. So, I don't know. These are just some thoughts. If you have any tips, concerns, insights, personal experience, I would love it if you would message me and um, give me that. Uh, maybe encourage me. I really feel like I'm ready to take the step with the, the bidet not the not the hosey thing because that just <laughs> you know sometimes <laughs> I lose my balance and fall off the toilet if I have to do some spraying and balancing that just feels like it's not gonna work out so anyway stand with me stay strong give me some of your feedback other than that I hope you're doing good